Hello there everybody and it's Sally here with today's Tuesday teaching tips from the Curious Piano Teachers. Now I'm a bit later than I normally am actually today on this Tuesday and that's because we've just been live in having a webinar with members of the community of the Curious Piano Teachers and this month um, we're looking at romantic music and the interpretation of romantic music and we've been looking at various composers such as Schumann um, and today's webinar we were looking at Chopin and in particular we were looking at his B minor prelude which is this one and I thought I'd share a little bit of our thoughts about it with you but it's this one just to make sure you all know which one I'm talking about. Um, so just want to share with you today about the right hand part now um, von Bülow when he's giving names to all these preludes he called this one tolling bell and uh, I didn't know till fairly recently that it was actually one of the two preludes that was played actually at Chopin's funeral and I think possibly we can hear those bells or that's a good image. I don't think Chopin had that in mind at all when he wrote this piece. It is, of course, full of melancholy, however. But there's certainly something here that could, could help us with this. It's that repeated note, isn't it? It's very insistent. But, of course, what you don't want to hear from your students is... I know I've certainly come across that in my time. And how to avoid that? Well, um, I think one thing is is singing because if you have a, if you sing, you have the you get the correct mental model. That's why it's so so vital. Um, and you could practice singing in the wrong way. So the wrong way might be. La, 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 like that. I love the way my hands going like that. Um, and actually what's been written, especially on my copy here, the first note is not accented, but it is weightier. I think that's one way to think of it. And it would be more like, la, <clears throat> la, 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 Look at the difference in my hand. If I do it with my right hand, even better. And I think, you know, just to imagine that bell and then it's rebound. That's what we want here. Okay, so how are you going to get them? How are you going to get to do that? Well, I think the first thing to recognise is that the fingers are going to stay on the keys. Yeah, it's like they've got little suckers on the end of them. They're not going to come off. None of those three fingers. I've got one, two, and five. They're not going to come off the keys at all. They're going to stay in contact with the keys. So the first thing to do is to be aware of putting the, the chords down and up without lifting the fingers off. So it's, it is actually from the arm with a little bit of a nice wrist flexibility here to help. With that top note, the repeated B, that's a different matter completely because of course the bottom two stay down and the top one has to repeat. So even there, you're not going to lift it off. And what you do need to be aware of is the, the depth, the point of sound that you're going to go through the little kick point, can you hear that? That all your pianos will have. And it's that that you need to keep in contact with and your students need to be sensitive to. So one thing you could do is play the bottom two and just leave them there. And then with the top one, let's do a descending scale. By that I mean six, five, four, three, two, one. Here's six. Five. Four. Three, two, one, zero. <laughs> I think that's about as far as I'm going to go. But I, I should be able to go up to ten with that. Okay, and and what that does is is it creates a sensitivity towards what do I have to do? You could see I wasn't looking at you. I was looking over here, and I was thinking of what's happening in here, and 
how I'm going to communicate that to my finger. And I was also listening to make sure that gradation was coming, was was um, descending, diminuendoing me, I suppose you might say. And that is such a such a lovely little game to play because it is. It, it's just listening. It just kind of gets you really involved in the sound of the piano. And the other thing to think about is as you play it like this, if you watch my arm, look how it is pulsating. Yeah, it's not square. It's not stiff. There is a little wave coming down. In fact, I was talking to one of my adults yesterday about the wave in the arm. Because a lot of adults who come back to the piano find are stiff. They find it difficult to wave, especially if they were never taught like that, which I'm sad to say a lot of them are, um, are, are, are similar to that. They were taught a very linear kind of stuck approach. So getting this little wave from the wrist as we go up is really important for them. But you can see everything is just staying in contact and that repeated note then will happen. prelude in B minor um, which we've all enjoyed exploring together and hopefully there's just a little hint of for there there for you of how to really place and play that right hand bell-like sound with great beauty so that's all from me thank you to those of you that have joined us I can see I've got Ruth there hi Ruth and Christine and Helen as well thank you for watching so much and see you next week with another Tuesday teaching tip thank you folks Bye-bye for now.